is my uh, 1867 77 Verndal uh, Jaeger model that I uh, recently acquired. Just wanted to do a video on how these uh, rifles are taken apart and cleaned. Um, as I looked on YouTube, there really isn't any sort of uh, good tutorial about uh, taking these apart uh, entirely. Um, there is a video by, uh, I believe his name is Millserv Underground, uh, who will provide a link to in the uh, the video here about uh, taking apart one of the I believe it's like the later models which uh, move the um, lock plate over here or the hammer assembly over to kind of a more centralized position. Um, they've got like a different uh, mainspring over here and uh, different kind of block assembly over here. So uh, this is one of the earlier models. Um, so the disassembly is going to be kind of different, so this is going to be kind of a supplement to uh, what uh, that guy put together. So yeah, let's uh, just kind of go over how this, this uh, rifle functions, and we'll start taking it apart. So this rifle has a pretty interesting uh, action system called a, it's a, a rotating block, I guess, or a tabernacle over here. And just by looking at it from the side, it looks... Uh, very reminiscent of the like old school um, uh, muzzle loader percussion cap rifles, as it has a lock plate over here to the side and a uh, external hammer. But uh, rather than this hitting a percussion cap, this is actually hitting a spring-loaded firing pin over here in the tabernacle, which sets off a metallic uh, cartridge uh, loaded with black powder that is actually breech-loaded. So, kind of a mix in old and new. All right, let's go through the process of uh, firing this uh, rifle. So uh, for starters, you'll notice that the hammer is all the way down in the uh, fired position. Um, so this is what uh, hits the firing pin that's inside of here that's spring-loaded. Uh, it also acts as a uh, kind of a stopper for the action, so it kind of locks it up, uh, preventing me from opening up the action. So in order to open it up, we have to go to the half cock position, listen for the click. There we go. And we'll flip over the tabernacle. As you can see here, we've got our empty chamber. We have uh, the channel for the cartridge. And there is a um, kind of a, a, a automatic spring-loaded ejector that's built into the system by flicking this paddle. As you can see here, that is going to kick the cartridge out. So anyway, we'll go through the process of loading a, this is a 11 millimeter Verndal um, snap cap, obviously not loaded with anything, and this is just a little rubber insert. So we're in the half cock position. We're going to throw in our cartridge, flick it closed, go to the full cock position here. We'll pull the very heavy trigger, I think it's like 15 foot pounds, and it'll close all the way. Uh, I'm just being gentle because I know this firing pin is delicate. And it'll hit the, uh, the uh, firing pin. It'll set off the primer and ignite the cartridge. Go to our half cock position. Oh, and there goes our cartridge fully ejected. So before we start taking this rifle apart, I just wanted to talk to you about some of the tools that you're going to need in order to perform this action. So uh, when I got this rifle originally, it I don't think it's been taken apart for, who knows, maybe a hundred years or so. Um, there was a whole lot of rust, patina, um, and just kind of like this weird, like thick, gunky preservative that, who knows, maybe it's Cosmoline, maybe it's, you know, whatever they used before Cosmoline was invented. Um, the action was like super gummy, all the screws were kind of really kind of frozen up in place, so it needed a little bit of work. So um, I'll just go through all the things that I use in order to take this thing apart for the first time. So first off, um, I found this kind of labeled parts diagram just so I understand, um, you know, what each component was called and kind of helped to make sure that I didn't lose anything and kept track of everything. Got a set of uh, brass punches over here. Um, just got these from Amazon. 
um, obviously some are already a little bit bent from use on other rifles. Basically, um, these are kind of a, a, a weaker metal than uh, you know the, the steel that's on the rifle, so these will deform and scratch before your rifle does. So you don't want to use steel punches. Um, definitely want to use these uh, brass ones. Next we have a uh, simple clamp over here, uh, just a, a cheap little one with uh, rubber tips over here, and that'll be used for uh, keeping some spring pressure off of uh, a screw as you're unscrewing it. Um, hammer for uh, driving some action on these punches as we're removing some components. Uh, croil. Uh, this stuff, <laughs> it is extremely, extremely useful. Um, you're going to need this for possibly uh, removing uh, some very finely machined components that have been stuck together for like 100 years. And basically anytime you're dealing with any sort of uh, screw, whether it's a machine screw or wood screw, and I'll kind of go into that in a little bit of details. Um, you're also going to want a set of hollow ground uh, screwdriver tips and the appropriate screwdriver for them. What you don't want to use is a uh, household screwdriver set like this, or because it's got this like tapered edge to it. Hopefully that's coming up on camera, I can't really tell. Um, but if you use this, you're really going to mar up your uh, screw heads, and that's really not good for uh, a rifle like this where, you know, screws and spare parts are pretty much unobtainium. Uh, and then, oh yeah, uh, plastic bags. Uh, if you're taking apart your rifle for the first time, um, definitely have a bunch of these, like, Ziploc baggies. If you want to, you can label them and just kind of put each kind of sub-assemblies components in a separate bag. So that way you don't mix anything up and you have everything uh, kind of well organized for reassembly. So just a quick aside before we begin, um, kind of touching on one of the things I uh, mentioned earlier about using the right screwdriver tips and using croil. Uh, so here is a, a screw on the rifle. Um, obviously these are already cleaned up, so I'm just going to simulate this in case you run into the same situation I did. Um, you definitely don't want to just use, you know, whatever screwdriver tip uh, completely dry and just start cranking away at this thing because what you might end up doing is messing up the uh, the screw head or shearing the screw like inside the wood line. And that's just really, you're going to have a really bad day and, you know, forget trying to find a, a replacement screw. So what you're going to want to do is go through your, you know, screwdriver set and kind of figure out, okay, which, which one of these is going to work. Uh, this one looks like it will work, but actually if you take a look, it's only kind of getting into the the slot just a little bit. Um, and, you know, if you put some torque on this thing, you're just going to, you know, run this thing out. It'll jump out and possibly, like, ding up your stock and mess up the screw head. Um, here's one that, uh, oh, look, it kind of fits in there uh, pretty, pretty decently. It doesn't take up the full... Um, I guess, uh, 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 length of the, the screw slot, but I think it'll be good enough for our purposes. So, um, he, let's have that in mind. We're going to get out our coil, and then what you're going to do is, and I'm just simulating this, um, put a little bit of coil right around the edge of the screw and just let it sit for, you know, um, however long you, you think you, you're going to need. Uh, I just kind of default to a uh, half hour to an hour for something, you know, this old that's never been touched before. Then I take my uh, little hollow ground bit, get out my hammer, and then what I do is just kind of like tap this thing in. So make sure that's a nice and good fit, and then that tapping will actually uh, break up some of the, the rust in the, the screw that in the screw threads that are below the wood line. So um, that's really going to help minimize uh, the effort and strain in getting some of these older screws out. Now for taking this thing apart, obviously the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that it's unloaded. As you can see, there's, there's nothing here in that chamber. So we're going to just leave uh, the hammer here in the full cock position and use a appropriately sized screwdriver to take off the lock plate screws. There is a machine screw here in the front and a wood screw oops, and a wood screw over here in the rear. So 
So we've got this long one in the back and the shorter one over here in the front. And then with the lock plate, um, you're going to be really gentle with kind of wiggling this thing out. You don't want to be cranking this thing out because if you'll see here, it's uh, really thin wood and you don't want to induce any sort of cracking or mess anything up. So just kind of wiggle it free. Oops. And there we go. <laughs> All right, so we're uh, over here towards the back of the breech block. Um, as you can see, this is a, a separate assembly over here that uh, needs to come out in order to get the um, the tabernacle out. And it, it's retained in place over here by this uh, breech block um, screw. So just using our appropriately sized one. There we go. Take it out. Notice that it's only uh, partially threaded. So the difference uh, between uh, this type of rifle and the one that's shown in the video on uh, Milsurp Underground is this whole back kind of assembly. Um, so it takes a, a little bit of extra effort to get this uh, breech, uh, breech plate off. Um, you don't want to be wedging in anything to kind of like lift this thing up. Uh, you don't want to mar up any of the wood or scratch any of the metal. So Essentially what you have to end up doing is taking the entire uh, action out of the stock. So um, that's what we're going to do next. Alright, so this is the uh, kind of action spring uh, that drives this entire mechanism. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this screw out. So using the clamps, I'm just going to uh, clamp this section down to kind of uh, ensure that the uh, this little screw as we take it out isn't getting ripped out of its threads because it's under a lot of uh, spring pressure from uh, this assembly over here. As you can see, the, the leaf spring is starting to lift up. Now the spring won't fly out, or I'm sorry, the screw won't fly out, but it does help to keep it compressed a little bit as you're pulling this thing out. There's the uh, spring retaining screw and the spring just slides out like that. Alright, uh, so while we're here we're also going to take out this action screw back here. Just going to make sure that we have the right sized screwdriver bit. This one's too big. There we go. It's a nice big long one. Alright, so next we have to take out the barrel bands. These are simply unscrewed. I kind of cheated and did this ahead of time, so that I'll come out there. Same with the middle one. Be a good idea to remove the clearing rod. Set that off to the side. And our barrel bands just come off. Alright, and the uh, front barrel band, which just kind of clamps onto the barrel, uh, that's retained in place by a tiny screw over here in the bottom. So, once again, got to make sure that you've got the clearing rod removed. Don't lose that screw. And then here is where the punches are going to come into place. So we're just going to rotate the barrel band back like that. We're going to get our huh, appropriately sized brass punch and just kind of give it some light little love taps.
and it just slides right off. Alright, and flipping the rifle over, we have uh, another uh, action screw over here that we're going to have to take off on the uh, trigger guard assembly. Now, uh, my Jaeger model has this kind of crazy looking trigger guard, uh, little semi pistol grip thing over here. That's retained in place by this screw. We don't necessarily have to remove this uh, in order to take the action out, so I'm just going to leave it in place. But uh, in case you're wondering, um, it is kind of spring-loaded in here a little bit, so if you're taking this one out, definitely have like a thumb or something keeping pressure over here to keep this thing from being ripped out. Alright, and then with that we'll turn rifle over and as you can see without the uh, spring in place over here the tabernacle just kind of flops around because there's nothing for this uh, machined assembly to kind of fight against. Now at this point you can just lift the action out of the stock hopefully it's not gummed up in there and just gently set it off to the side. Now we're back to what we uh, originally wanted to do which is to get this back breech plate off. So um, the one that I had was really kind of gummed up in there. What I ended up having to do is just take this entire assembly, fill like a little uh, uh, a basin or a container full of croil and just let this thing sit overnight to kind of get into these little finely machined services and kind of break up uh, any sort of rust and get it a little bit freed up. So um, and then what I did is I just took this uh, brass punch, kind of uh, put it over here at this surface, and just started uh, tapping away at it. Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention, definitely keep uh, the tabernacle in the open position so you're not fighting against it. There we go, it just kind of lifts up and out. Whew. This is going to be a struggle doing it the first time. Alright, and then now your tabernacle is free. Just jiggle it out. And then over here we have our ejector that's just free to rotate. And this one just kind of lifts up and out. As you can see, it's, it's got this little nub that fits into a little machined recess back in there. And it's perfectly machined like this to kick out the, uh, the cartridge. All right, so here's our bolt. Just kind of taking a quick look at it. As you can see, it's a spring-loaded firing pin here. As the hammer hits that surface, firing pin sticks out. Now it's retained in place by this little screw here, so we'll take that out. And as you can see the spring or the firing pin started to pop out. Now the edge of the firing pin spring is kind of uh, cammed to fit kind of the angled firing position that it's in in this flat surface over here. And it's got this notch cut in it that's retained in place by this pin. And uh, it, the problem that I was running into with mine is this surface over here, this little upper ridge, um, it was kind of bulged out. So the firing pin was actually kind of stuck in here in the firing position. And so that was kind of a, a pain in the butt to address. So what I ended up doing is I just kind of filed this edge a little bit so it's perfectly in line and uh, goes freely. So when you put this uh, firing pin back in, you know, it only goes in one way. And you want to line up this notch over here with the path of this screw, this retaining pin screw over here. So there's a, 
we go. That locks it in place and you just tighten this kind of locking pin screw type thing. And there you go, and we're uh, back in business. And we'll go ahead and reassemble the rifle. So reassembly, uh, we'll just kind of abbreviate. It's uh, reverse of what we did to disassemble. So we'll get our extractor in there. We'll put in our tabernacle. Take our back plate. Hammer this thing down. Yep, once all those edges are flush, we'll put in the locking screw for the, the back plate. Go ahead and get that tightened up. Great. Now we're going to put this uh, rifle back in the stock. Start off with that super long action screw. Gonna tighten it until it's snug and flush with the surface. We'll uh, slip in our uh, little action or action main spring over here. Just kind of have this screw in place over here. Install the bottom action screw. Slip on the barrel bands. that retains the front little nose cap. If you have a cleaning rod, now would be a good time to put it back in. And lastly, we'll put our lock back on. Should just slide in place like that. And then lastly, just do a functional check. 